All right, guys. Well, here we are. It is Mother's Day today. So first and foremost, I want to wish all the mothers out there a happy Mother's Day. Um, happy Mother's Day to everyone that has children. Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there that don't have children but act motherly. Happy Mother's Day to all the women out there that have lost children. And Happy Mother's Day to my mother, my partner, and my partner's mother. So what? I like girls. So what? <laughs> I'm a fucking weirdo. Ah, all right. So anyway, I know that uh, the last couple days, I, I have been very busy, but on top of that, what's even worse is that I have been detained by police twice in the last three days. Um, happened the first night that I was here, and it happened last night again. Last night was ridiculous, though. I got handcuffed, <clears throat> and I don't want everybody on the internet to see what happened last night because, well, I don't have a video of it, but I don't want to talk about it for too many people because clearly what had happened is I put up the first video. It went on Instagram. It got 24,000 views. It got thousands of views on YouTube, Patreon, Facebook, whatever. And last night I got straight up butt fucked with a baton. I was like, uh... I'm not saying shit. Just keep doing it. All right, anyway, I know, and I look homeless. Um, I didn't shower for four days. I have showered now. I showered yesterday, but that explains that my grotesque appearance right now. I have lost 12 pounds of paleo. I've stayed committed to that, even though I'm smoking cigarettes and I'm a bitch. Yeah. My friend uh, texted me today. He's like, hey, I saw you smoking on Instagram. You're a bitch. I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, you can pretty much talk to me however you want. I'm not going to do shit. I'm just going to curl up in a ball. He's like, I know. That's why I said it. So um, I did a video on Friday night. And I, my parents don't have Wi-Fi here. Well, it's down. Santa Barbara fucking sucks. Actually, Southern California in general sucks for Wi-Fi connection. I don't know if that, I don't know what that is. You know, I'm sure that, all right, I'm not going to get political. But it doesn't matter. I'm not pointing any blame. But uh, I did do a $20 tier video, and then I did a monologue. And both of those videos I have, you'll see. You'll be like, oh, he's for reals. I am. Um, I went to Starbucks yesterday because I went to go get my car washed. Check this out. So I go to get my car washed yesterday. I have a 2017 BMW 3 Series. It's newer. It's not, like, super fancy. But, I mean, you know, it's within the last few years. Um, my parents got that for me for, uh, a, my birthday last year. You know, my dad was like, my dad's the kind of guy where like, he won't give me big presents. I don't think he's ever, he's never bought me a new car like that ever. That was the one and only time. And it was because, um, I'm doing well right now. I'm supporting my family. He hasn't had to lend me money for almost two years. And that's, that's amazing. I used to get wild with him. I used to be like, dude, I'll suck your dick. I don't even care. I don't even care. I'm trying to get an apartment, so? I was talking to my to Karina the other day and she was laughing because I stunk. Like I was trying to have sex with her and she's like, you smell. I was like, of course she was like, your dick stinks. And I was telling her this story about, and she thought this was funny. I'll tell you very, very briefly, and then we can get into uh, the main event. But I, I do want to run over a couple things. And then I'm going to be back in LA tonight, and I want to return to our normal programming, but I also want to start expanding. There's two things that I want to, three things, four things that I want to introduce to Patreon and to YouTube. First is going to be walks. Right. I'm going to because I'm trying to lose weight right now, and I'm trying to get back in shape. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I I lost 12 pounds doing paleo. Even my mom. The first thing she said is she's like, damn, you're not fat anymore. I was like, that's your sweetheart. Thanks. But I haven't really started my workout program. And last summer I was probably at my best with all my content creation because I was working out every day or five days a week. And it's a fact when your mind, body, and spirit are connected and in balance and in rhythm, it's certainly for me, I function with the highest efficacy. Who talks like that? Yes, the efficacy. It's fucking, 
We, we, I don't even know what that means. I just made it up. Um, but uh, so what I'm going to start doing is a pro, uh, a series called Walks. And I'm just going to go for an hour walk around my neighborhood. And I'm going to talk into my GoPro. And then I'm going to upload it. And I don't know which tier I'm going to do that for. But I need to do more content. And what am I going to be talking about? <laughs> I don't know, just random shit, maybe stories, whatever, you know, we'll see how that works. It's an experiment. I don't know if it's going to work, but I think that when I walk, I tend to, um, create good content. Okay. Secondly, I uploaded a commentary video the other day. Commentary is easy for me to do. It's easy. That video that I showed you where the female guard got beat up by the guy, that guy's a piece of shit. I don't care. I, you know, Somebody has said I've gotten too cop friendly recently. Um, I do not like cops. I do not like guards. But I will say this: I respect the f anybody that puts food on the table on the table for their family. You got to understand, like these guys have a tough job, right? But that particular situation, that guard, I don't give a fuck what the protocol is in a uh, county jail or prison. If I see a female get hit, I'm going to, I'm tackling the person. I'm going to beat them up. I'm going to take that personally. It's not a jail thing. It is a human thing. You don't hit women. And all my scumbag shit that I've done over the years, I've never hit a woman. I've never done anything creepy sexually. Well, not anything that was unconsensual. And I've never hurt an animal. And I've never snitched. What was the point? Oh, I've never hit a woman. Yeah. There's been women I've wanted to hit. I wrote it in my diary. I was like, this bitch did. I was trying to, I should have cracked this slut in the face. But that is as far as it goes. Hitting a woman, I'm sorry, man. I don't, if one of you have done that on your ears, scumbag, you know it. You know, that's some bitch shit. It is. I've never, ever been cool with that. All right. Let's go uh, further. That commentary video, like I said, was very easy for me to do. I can do reaction videos. I was talking to my family. Remember a while ago, I wanted my parents to do reaction videos. My mom's not in sound mental health or in a state where she can do it, but my dad is. Be funny to have him watch like the pocket butthole and do a reaction. Oh, this is weird. You know, it'd be funny, I think. So reaction videos from him uh, through my entire catalog of stuff. And then also reaction videos for me on any content, right? Like, um, who knows? I don't know. Anything that I find interesting, instead of before I would just post random shit, shootings in LA and whatever, you know, stuff that it, it took away from my channel because it had nothing to do with me. Like, imagine if I, there's just an overlay of my voice and I'm like, man, I hope they butt fuck, you know, it, whatever, stuff like that. But I think the commentary videos, um, you know, be cool more guests you know um i want to do at least a guest a week go back to friends fridays including you guys i want to put you guys on my channel um and then i want to focus on stories and storylines as well but if i spread out different kinds of content like that uh i think everybody's going to be happy so walks guests um uh, reaction videos commentary videos and more stories you know and that's it. That's that's kind of my plan. So this video, um, you got to realize it's Mother's Day right now. I'm doing that thing today. That looks sexual, but you know what? I'm I'm, I'm going to try to. I don't know if I'll get it done. My nails. Look at how long my nails are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I'm down to finger. Yeah. How oh, it hurts. Thought you liked it when it. Oh. All right. Stop acting like you're Verizon, babe. We're, we're AT&T. We don't give a fuck. I'm going to try to do that today. And I, of course, I'll film it and I'll show you. Okay. And my mom, she's going through a struggle. She might come up here. She gets very confused. And if she does, try to be compassionate about it. Um, it's hard to do videos like this, especially Mother's Day. Like everybody, like my dad was like, fuck you. He's like, let's put a blanket over him and beat him with a bat. My mom's like, yeah. Trina's like, his dick stinks. And then Kate leaves a message. She's like, I miss you, Poo Poo Daddy. I always miss you on Mother's Day, Poo Poo Daddy. All right. Uh, so, la okay. So this is going to be 
I, I should tell you about this arrest last night. Or, yeah, I mean, I almost did get arrested. Like, not detained. Like, I got cuffed last night. We'll go into that. And then um, go back into this Henry story. Go back into Shaky Jake Redux when we get back. I've already done a sex files for the $20 tier. Come back. Do a psychedelics. Really just could start getting back in the swing of things. Although, yes, you're probably like, oh, you see this shit all the time. It's really in my mind to fucking, like, I'm getting, you know, I've been getting, like, more ambitious again. And I'm in one of those cycles, and I'm just going to embrace it. So last night, it's midnight, okay? And Karina does not like me going out by myself in Santa Barbara. And I'll tell you why, okay? I grew up here. You know that. And um, it's very weird, okay? Before I went to prison, you saw what I looked like. I was a ratty junkie that had probably done some queer shit on meth. And, like, people knew about it. And they're like, Phew. you know, at least his personality makes up for it. No. Got nothing against gay people. Okay. What I'm saying, though, I just think it's funny because meth heads and the gay thing, it's just, to me, it's funny. Um... It's an inside joke, and if you understand that, you do. All right. Uh, before I went to prison, I was a big drug dealer in this town. Everybody knew who I was, and it was not just a um, the kind of thing where I, like, you know, had runners and didn't see anybody. It evolved into that. But in the beginning, when I first started selling Molly, I was having to go to nightclubs and give away capsules of Molly to sell cocaine at nightclubs, kind of town where pretty much any party or drug person knows who I am. Even before I went to prison. Now, people didn't respect me, you know? They're, oh, that fool smells like shit. He's a junkie, that kind of thing. But it was interesting. You know, like in high school, I was, I knew a lot of people. You know, I had what I thought were friends. Not, I didn't have a lot of real friends. But I was in the party crowd. I thought everybody was cool. And, like, nowadays, I'm like, what are you doing at the gas station? They're like, borrowing my mom's van. What are you doing? I'm, like, getting gas with my car. My dad bought it for me. He's like, shut up. I'm going away. I'm like, all right. All these guys that I idolized essentially went nowhere with their lives. And I, when I say nowhere, I'm not talking about... I, I'm not the kind of person that thinks, like, if you're not, like, some artist, you're not cool. Or, like, I don't respect... I respect any fucking job. I really do. It goes for police, anybody. Um, I'm talking about the guys that I grew up with and party with that don't even have a job. You know, they live off their mooches. They live off unemployment, you know, um, SSI, whatever. I was just like, God damn, man, get a job. You're like 37 years old, 38 years old. And they're all in all those guys, of course, have turned into addicts. You know, back then I embraced the addict thing and I was more like overt with it. But these guys are like the slow burn addicts. They're like, you know. Like, missing half their nose. They're like, I think I might, I think I might be addicted now. And, like, my nose just constantly leaks shit. I've known this for years. Anyway. When I got out of prison, it was interesting because people respected me. It was weird. Like, the cool crowds above me that, like, always used to just think I was some, like, lame little junkie guy. Oh, what's up, brother? Shake my hand. And they all thought it was cool that I went to prison. That should say something about them. I'm like, it was cool. It was cool, dude. I was group showering with men. No, I wasn't back in the feds, but I imagined I was. I told people anyway. Group showers every day, homeboy. It's fighting to preserve my asshole, wouldn't you? You would do the same. And these people started giving me this kind of like faux respect, okay? And it was cool because a lot of people got sober because of me. A lot of people. A lot of people I went to high school with saw that I got clean and were like, if you can do it, I can do it. Hit me up. What do I do? Hey, let's get you in meetings. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's get you working out. I probably got a dozen people sober when I got out. And it made me feel good. And it's probably why I stayed clean for three years. Gotta help other people. AA or not. When I relapsed, that same thing happened where people stopped respecting me. You know, how do I know that? I'd be like at like subway i'd be like yeah let me get a 12 inch and i'd like hear someone they'd be like hey man that's ryan leone that guy's a bitch i'm like i'm i can you're standing four feet from me bro come on let's go and they'd like leave they're like wearing like their F santa barbara high football outfits i'm like what the fuck then when i came up a bit and i was in the papers here when i had the billboard breakdown google me era 
I think a lot of people started giving me respect again because they're like, oh, he, you know, he, he's doing something with himself. And people, it's just human nature. You respect somebody that fell, that was able to claw their way out. And I'm not perfect. I still make mistakes, but I think I've done a fairly good job compared to the person I used to be. One area in that is goddamn police. They're always harassing me. As you saw in the video, that was targeted harassment. Later, the, and I will post the other half of that video. It got a little Google me-ish. And I know you'll appreciate that, but the general public will be like, what a narcissistic fuck. And I am, but I do care about other people. And I think that separates me from a true narcissist. Arrogant, self-absorbed, yes, but so is a lot of people. I'm just, don't hide it, you know? Police do not like me because they think that I represent this, like, like it's cool to be anti-police, right? Because I was like that for so long. Cop busters and, like, I was just really, like, I hated authority. I think I had antisocial behavioral disorder. I think I grew out of that. When I was in the papers and then I got billboards and then, there, you know, um, there's articles coming out and national, all that shit. Cops really started fucking with me. You know, how dare this this author come and start pimping bitches out in our town? That shit's disgusting. He needs to be locked up. Okay, fair enough. But I did my time. I'm done. I'm a family guy now, and I try really hard to stay out of jail. I don't do anything illegal. I don't, you know? Um, so anyway... You saw what happened the first night, and I will release the second half exclusively for Patreon. I'll probably be on an upper tier. I don't want everybody to see it. I, it's embarrassing. Google me. You know who I am? Fuck. I, like, show the um, flower tattoo. What does that say? Not welcome. Google me, bitch. So last night, it's midnight. I stink. I smell like shit. I'm trying to fuck Karina. She's like, you stink. Take a shower. It's like, I need cigarettes. She's like, Nico needs milk. All right, cool. Um, I'm in a shower because I didn't want to miss out on sex. Scrub myself. We'll have sex. I'll go to the gas station. I would get, or I go to 7-Eleven. I would get a, uh, the milk and cigarettes. So I showered. We had sex. I leave. I take Karina's debit card. Now, I don't have a bank account. Well, I do know. I have a Chase account, but I haven't gotten the debit card yet. I just signed up last week because I had to cash that $2,500 check to pay the editor. I don't have my own debit. So what I do is I have all my money in PayPal, crypto, um, cash app, Venmo. Um, I just have money in all sorts of different places from various, you know, Patreon pays me in PayPal, shit like that. So when I need to use money, I transfer it to Karina's debit card, but it says her name on it. So last night I leave and Karina's like, don't do drugs. And the reason that she said that is because for some weird reason, the druggies in Santa Barbara love to give me drugs. We uh, happens to us all the time. It, it, nobody ever gave me drugs before, but the last three or four years they have. Be at like the grocery store and someone would be like, do you want crack? I'm like, yeah, take it. Karina's like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, recycling, I don't know. Save the, save the whales, you know? So she's, she never wants me to be alone in Santa Barbara, even though Nico needed milk and I needed cigarettes. So anyway, she gives me this long like spiel. Hey, you better not fucking go do drugs. I'm like, drugs in English please and so I leave and uh I get to 7-Eleven go up there now I'm wearing my girl's super flamboyant mask okay looks like I should have fucking roller skates and short shorts on it's like this like mask with all these like shiny rainbow beads on it they don't give a fuck I'm like whatever I'm in pajamas you know Chick that's working behind the counters, this like Paisa lady. I was like, hey, this is my girl's mask. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. She's like, damn. She's like, that's fucking. She's like, like maybe you guys can role play and you can pretend like you're some gay fool. I swear to, I put that on Nico. She said that. Like, I don't know. It was very weird 
considering the kind of stuff I always say jokingly, but she actually said that. I swear to God, I put that on my mother on everything. All right. I was like, yeah, I was like, well, it's going to be hard to do that when uh, I just got finished doing that. You know what I'm talking about? And she she says some shit in Spanish, and I was just like, yeah, we bien or something, whatever words I know. So I put the milk and Evian in a pack of cigarettes. I think the total was like 18 bucks. Put it on there. I take out Karina's Bank of America debit card. I go to run it. it says approved. All right. Have a nice rest of your day. She's all like smiling. I think she thought like I wanted to fuck her. I was like, mm, no. But anyway, so I leave and, uh, or I'm like getting out the door and she's like, hey, Weddle. Well. I was like, what? The, the card that only has a dollar eighty on it. You do not have enough to get the milk and the Evian and the, uh, the cigarettes. I'm like, fuck. I said, no problem. My girl probably went on some online shopping spree, which she does very frequently. And it sucks. And so I have to, that's why I don't keep money in her bank account because she spends it no matter what. It sucks. So I transfer 30 bucks onto my PayPal or from my PayPal into the Bank of America card. I said, all right, run it. it says approved again, but I wait to be courteous. She said, no, there's only a dollar 80 on the card. What the fuck? Add another 20 bucks. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, and this happens once in a while because we do not leave that account full of money ever. I, we used to get overdraft fees, but we just went to the bank and we're like, dude, like we use this to pay bills and like whatever. We explained like what the purpose of the account was. So I was still thinking that it might be like that. I forgot that we had done that. And I was like, okay, she might be overdraft. I put another hundred on there. Declined again. Okay. Sometimes when I go to 7-Eleven, it's happened where I've done the wrong pin. I do my pin and it's actually her pin because I have my own cards and shit. Um, and I do the wrong pin like three times, then it automatically shuts it off because, um, either there's like a security text message, an SMS that gets sent out automatically by Bank of America. And Karina's like, yep, <sighs> my partner's a piece of shit and he's on check systems and can't get a check and can't get an account. I'm not on check systems. I'm just kicked off Bank of America. Uh, I got one at Chase, but anyway. Girl's like, why don't you try the ATM? Go to the ATM. And I, you know, you can check the balance. I check the balance. Dollar eighty. I'm looking at the transaction. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Nothing on there that would explain why my money. I don't see any of my money. I get back on PayPal. It says pending. What? Why do I pay an instant fee then? I pay the whatever percentage it is so that uh, I can get that money instantly. This super sketchy homeless guy comes in, okay? And while that's going on, I start calling Karina. I call her like two times, three times. Doesn't pick up. I'm like, fuck. She fell asleep. Like, I just had sex with her and she probably just passed out. Like, thank God, thank God it's over. I'm just so tired. I'm just She's one of those people I think just had sex with me to shut me up. So I'm blowing her up. She's not picking up. This guy comes in and he's wearing like one of those poncho type pullovers you know it's like a, it's a poncho it's like but it's like it has some spanish weave to it you know it looks very um hispanic but he, but this guy what well, he was a white guy but he's wearing like one of those mexican ponchos yeah i'm sure you know what i'm talking about it's like woven poncho now this guy looks homeless as fuck he's got like black fucking coal stains all over his face He's wearing like one of those, like those gloves where like the fingertips are cut out. And he's buying all this super expensive protein bar shit. The ones that are like $4 with like some whey isolate in it. Probably like $30 worth of shit, right? And I'm like, what the fuck, man? I don't know. It, was, it struck me as odd with what he was buying, but it, I don't know. It also is like, okay, maybe this guy's not homeless. Maybe he's just like addicted to meth or something. Probably has Venmo or Cash App or PayPal or something. I was like, hey, man. He looks over at me. 
looks totally sober too. Like he looks me in the eyes and I was like, wait a second, this guy doesn't even look homeless. You can tell when somebody's on one and you can tell when someone is not on one. You know, when someone is on one, there's this vacancy and, glo and glossiness in their eyes. I, I can tell. The stone sober. I was like, why is this guy dressed like this? Is it like homeless night at some of the clubs downtown? Everybody like comes there and like has signs, like speed dating signs, but like, I don't know, hobo role playing. So I asked him, I was like, hey, look, man, uh, I've run into a situation here. I got money on this. I got money on this. Look at this. I show him like a bunch of money in my PayPal. I'm like, look, I got this in here. He goes, um, I, he's like, so what do you want? I was like, look, I'll make you a deal. I'll buy you all of those protein bars if you can buy me this pack of cigarettes, this milk, and this water. He's like, yeah, all right. You got Zell? He's like, no, I don't have Zell, dude. You don't have Cash App or PayPal or Venmo? What the fuck, dude? It's 2000. Zell? Were you a drug dealer? No, I didn't say that. He's like, sorry, brother. I can't help you. Yeah, of course not. All right, man. Have, have, be safe tonight. Cover up. And looks at me like... I bet he's probably thinking, he's like, damn, was that a homeless job? I'm not homeless. I just live with my mom. So? And there are... I do know people that live with their parents that, like... Because they don't have to fend for themselves, they have bad hygiene. I'm one of them. Hi. Do I have a beard and, like, Catwoman nails right now? So I call Karina again a couple times. This shit's annoying me. I'm just like, God damn, man. Fuck, I'm almost about, I'm like, seven minutes from my parents' house. I'm almost about to get in my car and go back up to my house. Go get, like, the green dot card or, like, go get my PayPal card. Whatever. I don't know. That's just the card I happen to take. Cop comes in. Never seen the cop before. Hey, how you doing? I'm like, remember, I just had this confrontation with the other cop. I'm like, fuck, dude. Fuck. I was like, I'm, no, I, I said, I don't know. I'm not too happy right now. He's like, why is that? I'm like, well, I'm trying to buy milk for my kid right now, cigarettes for myself, and, um, for some reason, my bank's not letting me transfer money. And he's like, well, heard that you're using somebody else's card. Heard that I'm using somebody else's card. Before, I didn't never said that. I just said I was having trouble transferring money from my bank into my card. That's it. So I'm like, oh, no. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I'm using my wife's card. I call Karina my wife, even though she's not my wife. My ex-wife was my wife. You are such a drug addict. She was my fucking bitch-ass wife. But Karina is like my life partner, my soulmate, my real deal relationship. But I call her my wife. She's too good to just be my girlfriend, to just be my fiance, whatever. She's my partner or my wife, but I call her my wife. Do you have identification on you? And I'm like, my phone is on the counter of course i'm going to grab it to record it and he goes hey can you empty your pockets for me and i was like yeah can i grab my phone he's like no i don't know if that's a taser is what he says you don't know if my cell phone's a taser i said dude you can see the home screen it's not like some fake taser empty your pockets so, of course, I'm already in a bad mood. I started getting a little combative. I said, no, man. You're harassing me. You guys are always harassing me. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm using cuss words every day. I'm not happy this time. He, I end up emptying my pockets for him. I don't remember why I did that, but I do it. I think I could, like... Maybe see that the situation was escalating. Yes, it was last night, but there was t a lot of tension involved with this shit. Somehow, I don't remember if I emptied my pocket or like, somehow he saw the card, right? I mean, obviously I've been told on. I don't know by the lady at 7-Eleven or the homeless guy was an undercover cop. I don't know. 
He sees the card. It's Bank of America. It says Karina Franco. He's like, that's your wife? I said, yeah. Again, I don't identify her as just my girlfriend, which I should have. It's okay. Can I see your identification? Now, I had my wallet in my car. In my wallet, I had two stipend debit cards, which were didn't have money in them. Uh, I had taken cash out those a long time ago and added them to my PayPal. But anyway, I had like a AAA card, my driver's license, etc. but it was in my car. And I said, I don't have identification on me. And the reason I didn't is because yesterday um, I had gone and gotten something for one of my friends. Not what you think, doesn't matter, but I didn't want it. It was fucking weed plants, the little clones, dude. They were in my car. And yes, it's legal in the state, but like I was still like, ooh, I don't know. Like I didn't want him to look through my car, you know? I can say that, you know, it's legal in California. And, uh, and I wasn't selling them. My buddy gave me clones of some really, of a great strain. I was giving it to one of my friends in LA. That's it. So I, st I go outside with this cop and he wants to, to, he wants me to open my, um, my, my car, right? I refuse to do so. That's the point. He says, Hey, put your hands behind your back for me. I said, for what? He's like, you're being detained. I said, for what? He said, for not identifying yourself in a potential felony. Uh, what is the potential felony? He said, credit card fraud. I said, credit. I said, bro, I just celebrated four years with this woman. Like, we're, have a child together. We have another one on the way. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Cuffs me. He's like, you're going to go to jail for resisting arrest anyway. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me, man? Like, so now I'm cuffed. By this point, there's two more cops that have come. Forgot to mention that. But now there's three cops in this fucking parking lot. They get there and they come up and they're asking me if they can get access to my car. I say no. They say they can get a search warrant. I don't know. I have clones in the car. Not that big a deal, but... Also, I have PTSD from being in prison three times. And even though it's legal, I'm like, Ugh, you know, because at one point having weed plants was a big ass deal. Now you're allowed to have them legally, even without a medical card. Recreational marijuana is legal here. Um, and I haven't been smoking the last few days anyway. I've been so paranoid about cops that I'm like, Ugh, like, you know, I don't even want to do that. So the, one of the cops is there is a female. So the two guys that were there, it's like, one of them was white, one of them was Mexican, and there was a white girl. The two dudes were being dicks to me. The girl was like my age, and she was being really cool. She comes up to me, and she's like, so that's your wife. And I was like, then that was the first time that I caught it. And I said, no, she's not my wife. She's my girlfriend. And she's like, so why are you telling my partner that it's your wife. And I said, and I explained it. And I did some straight up Shakespearean shit. I was like, because she means a lot more to me than just a girlfriend. And out of respect for her, a woman that has mothered one of my child and is mothering the second right now, has one on the way. I respect her way too much to, you know, discount her by calling her my girlfriend. She deserves to be my wife. I just haven't had the money to be able to get married. She looks over at my car. She said, it's an $80,000 car. I'm like, it's not, it's a 2017, it's not an $80,000 car. What does that have to do with, what is that? That was, I said, that was a gift. My dad gave me that. She's like, okay. And still, this is the one that was cool to me, by the way. She's like, can you prove that you're with her? I said, yes, it's on my Facebook. It says that I'm in a relationship with her. Go on my Facebook and look. They're like, okay, what's the code to your phone? I said, oh, no, 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 no. Nope. I will not give police access to my cell phone. They're like, why are you doing something illegal? I said, no, because it's a, I'm a fucking citizen. I'm a private citizen. I'm not on probation or parole. You have to, I'm in cuffs. Yelling. Yeah, like, one of my friends that I went to high school with, like he was like a preppy dude, rolls up at that point. He's like in an Audi, sees me, 
He's like, oh, hey, Ryan. I'm like, hey, it's not what it looks like. He's like, oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, man. Hey, get clean, brother. I was like, dude, it's not... God damn you. You're making me look like shit, you know? So, they, so they're trying to use the Facebook thing to get onto my cell phone. They're not getting on my cell phone. Eventually, I'm like, dude, I'm not giving you access to my cell phone. I'm not giving you access to my fucking car. And they said, well, then you're going to jail for suspicion of credit card fraud. I said, that's not even a fucking charge, man. That's the stupidest shit ever. Finally, finally, the girl looks up my shit on Facebook. And I just made it public recently. It used to be private where you couldn't find it on Google. And now you can't, thank God. I guess she could have looked up Karina's, but I think hers might be the same. It doesn't matter. It's like, okay, it says you're in a relationship, but how do we know that you weren't with her at one point and then you guys broke up? I was like, are you serious right now? I've never felt suicidal. You know, I have, but I've never felt suicidal in my entire life. You're pushing me in that direction. Just to be honest, you guys keep harassing me. This is the second time. You know who I am. You know that I have a record. That's what you're doing. You're harassing me. Stop it. One of the guys like, don't you write plays? I was like, shut up, dude. <laughs> I swear. I'm not, this is all, I'm not like saying things to make it funny or anything. This is exactly what went down. Don't you write plays or some shit? I'm like, look, dude, shut up. Just shut up, man. You guys are being... You, you know you're full of shit. Well, it looks like we got a prom. Unless you can get your wife, partner, whatever, on the phone. Call her. What's her phone number, right? This is where it gets horrible. All right. Well, yeah. What's her phone number? Let's call your wife. I was like, all right. What's her phone number? Karina just changed her number like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I don't know the new number by heart. And I was like, look, man, I know this sounds stupid, but I don't know the number by heart. You don't know your wife's number by heart. But you're married. I said, I'm not married, dude. She's a fucking girl. She's my girlfriend. She means more to me than my wife. Well, she means so much to you. Why don't you have her phone number? I said, do you know your wife's number? He's like, nope, I'm not married. I said, damn. Shocker, bro. Shocker. Sitting there cuffed. Some Southsiders rolled up at one point. They look like the sketchiest dudes I've ever seen. They like, were like wearing Raiders gear. They were like, they had shoulder pads on. They're like, yeah, dog, I think tomorrow we should go do an armed robbery in a different county so we don't get busted. They see the cops, they're like, hey, good evening, sir. All right. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, god damn, man. You guys are... And then I did my, my infamous line. I said, you know what? And I'm not joking about this house. I didn't say shit like that, but I... These sketchy-ass dudes came by. They paid them no attention. They were on me. They were on me. The guy said I was a playwright. He knew that I, who the fuck I was. And I'm not saying he thought that I was like some YouTube guy or whatever. When I caught that pimping and pandering case, it was everywhere. Everybody in town knew about this shit. I was. Oh, look right there's the pimp, man. Damn. Raised right too. Grows up pimping bitches. Hitting switches. All that. It was bad. And so forever I'm labeled as a pimp and a pimp. God damn. If I didn't know the story and somebody told me that some kid was a pimp, I would probably think I would actually, I would. I'd be like, that guy's a piece of shit. I'm going to judge him. I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, just judging someone. Cool. What's that? No, no, no. Just judging. Yeah, no. No, I don't know. Some other fucking weirdo. Oh, I was judging him too. What's that? So I don't know her number. 
now they're calling in saying weird shit on the intercom. I don't really know what they're saying, but I start getting really freaked out that I'm going to jail. Same as the first time, I'm kind of like, hmm, is it worth it? You know, I have a kid. And yes, Nico doesn't really understand full set. I mean, he understands, right? He's not really talking yet, but I tell him all the time. I promise him. I go, look, I'm sorry that I missed the first year of your life. I promise you, I will never miss another day because I'm locked up. I promise. I'll never do. And man, there's been a million opportunities, especially in the last year, where people have come to me and they're like, hey, here's a real easy way to do some fraud. Here's an easy way to sell drugs. Here's this and that. You could be making a lot of money. No, I'm doing just fine. You know, I'm very proud of where I'm at. And I, again, I appreciate the people that support me on Patreon. I have not given in to temptation as far as doing anything illegal aside from drugs. I've had relapses, but that's, that's its own beast. You know, that's not like, I haven't done anything illegal to like make money. Let's say that. So I freak out and I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'll let you guys search my car. I'm like, okay, are we going to find anything in there? Any weapons, any drugs, any pocket vaginas? I was like, you mean pocket butthole? God, illiterate fucks, dude. I didn't really say that, but they really did say that about the vagina thing. So clearly they'd seen the YouTube. And you know what? I've heard that um, our prophet told me that. Death told me that. Uh, big Herc told me that. Uh, uh, all of A lot of these bigger prison channels, I think even Jessica Kent has told me, that cops watch prison channels and they watch channels like mine because they want to get more hip to what's going on with people like me. Like, I yeah, I represent all the scumbags. Hi. And so... Yeah, it, it didn't shock me that these guys watched my channel and that was that. And, you know, it, it was like slowly they started revealing that they knew more and more about me. And obviously it was targeted attack. The, just like the night before with the cigarette, it was clear to me that that was a targeted attack. So I let them search my car. I don't know what's in there. I don't know if there's going to be a suboxone strip from, you know, back when I was on subs. I don't have a script for them anymore. Who knows? What the fuck could be in there? Who knows? It's like a dead paisa. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's a dead paisa that I won playing poker. Fuck, I didn't take it out of my trunk. That ain't mine. Nope. So, they start searching. And they are searching hard. Like, they, it was like... Like, I was like, are you fools on meth or something? Jesus Christ. Like, they were, like, taking latex gloves and, like, testing it and shit. I'm not even joking. They were getting, they're going like this on fucking dust that was, like, on my, I just got a car washed. So, you got to realize, there's, like, hardly any dust at all. Scrape it. I'm like, what are you, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, we're testing the 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 car dust for narcotics. And the girl's like, and this is why I think she was cool. She's like, she's like, hey, I'm sorry. I know you're trying to do the right thing right now. Like, I think it's cool. And I go, so you know who I am. You guys have made references three fucking times. Why do you need my ID? Why do you need my ID? I was yelling at her and she's just like, sir, we're just doing what we're told to do. I think that because the first video I put up on, I bet it's either, well, probably the YouTube or Instagram. I don't know. Instagram, I have the biggest following on it. I think that, you know, I mean, they got to be mad that I did that. Anyway, go through my car. I just, and what's funny, I swear, I just bought a dildo for, um, like one of those ones that you like stick on the, like on a window or a mirror or something. 
And for some reason I had that and I had like this massage lube and I had um, some uh, anal beads and shit. I got, um, I think I showed you guys that. I can't remember if I did or not. Yeah, but I had like adult toys and of course, sir, I'm like, come on, man. Is that necessary? You're just trying to embarrass me now? God damn. So I, I like anal beads in my asshole. Call me old fashioned. I do not like anal beads in my asshole. That's for, that's for the hyena. But yeah, they really found those and they were like commenting on it. The clones that I had were in like a, one of those white hefty trash bags. Pull it out. Marijuana, huh? You ain't, uh, you ain't selling no marijuana, are you? I said, no. Do you smoke marijuana? I said, yep, I sure do. It's legal. Sir, answer the question. Do you sell marijuana? I said, no, I don't sell marijuana. Why are you growing? I said, it's none of your fucking business, dude. Jesus, this has nothing to this has nothing to do with why you're searching me. You're searching me because you want my driver's license. It's in the front of my fucking wallet, man. Get a life. Wrap it back up and they put it back in, right? Continue to take everything apart. This goes on for three hours. Now Karina is blowing my phone up, but it's on silent. I don't even know that she's calling. So, of course, she assumes that I'm, like, doing drugs at this point. This goes on for between two to three hours. It gets to a point where I almost start zoning out, you know? And I, like, I, I don't know if you've ever been... Her, if, I've been harassed by police in Santa Barbara so hardcore. So hard. They fucking hate me. That's why I used to do Cop Busters. I... I'm so upset that I didn't have my can I was trying to record and this motherfucker got it out of me, dude. Or I mean, he got my phone away from me. And I ended up getting cuffed. So they go through all my stuff. Karina's calling a bunch of times. And finally, finally, after like, you know, however long it was, two hours and 45 minutes, three hours, whatever. They uncuff me. Like, they had found my wallet, they find my ID, they uncuffed me. I was like, did you talk to Karina or something? They're like, nah, man, we believe you, man. We're just making sure you're not up to no bullshit, Leone. Come on. And of course, me, you'll see the second half of the cigarette video. I can't keep my mouth shut. I just can't, you know, and people comment on Instagram and on, not on Facebook, you know, Facebook, I got friends and people that differ from opinion. If it's like too like shit talkish, I just it, it will not have them as friends. You know, I like to interact with people. I like to interact with you guys on those platforms. It's easiest for me. Um, Patreon just makes me so stressed out on the comments and, and it's very hard to comment. I don't know if it is like that on your end. It's hard as fuck to like. Like, it, like sometimes like the keys get locked and I it, like there's all these spelling errors. That's not, you know, I think from now on I got to start like doing posts and notes and then copy and paste in. But anyway, they let me go eventually. This is after a few hours of being harassed, however long it was. And, uh, and they gave me my keys back. So clearly that was targeted harassment that come on, man, come the fuck on. Oh, very important. Right, this is a very, 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 very important part of the story. I just got all worked up. You're like, yeah, fucking oh, NWA. Oh. Shoot it everywhere, yeah. Raekwon. Jesus. In the middle of it, the guy that looked homeless, the guy that had black coal fucking smears all over his face. I'm not joking. It's funny because I guarantee people think that I joke about shit like this. Like that it's like exaggerated to some degree. I do a very good job of saying when things are not true, a joke, whatever. Or names are changed. You got to admit, you've seen pictures of Kate. Hey, Pugani. You can see her in that. 
You are such a drug addict. You've seen videos of her. She talks just like that. Fucking whore. A lot of my friends say my descriptions of people are spot on. They're like, damn, dude. Like, I don't know how you remember shit for 20 years ago, but you, I, as soon as you said it, I remembered exactly the way you say it. And I don't know how I'm able to do that. I don't know. I'm a bitch. No, I have explained it before. It's being in rehab, prison, jail, all this, like, recycles and preserves these stories. So, in the middle of it, probably about an hour and a half into it, I don't remember what was going on at that moment. I think I was talking to the girl, girl cop, who was the only one that was decent. She said she was sorry. You know, how often do police do that, really? When a cop apologized to me, I'm, I'm happy about it. And I'm not pro-cop now, but I'm not anti-cop either. I'm not, like, going around, like, looking for problems. Maybe me posting that content was that. My dad told me that was foolish of me to do. Um, you know, but at the same time, I want... Police have a very important job. Prison guards have a very important job. This is the thing. When you're in a position to uphold that law, you can't abuse that power or else there's this divide. So at some point, I want to go to prisons and I want to go to police stations and I want to do talks with police and with guards and say, look, let me teach you diplomacy. Let's start employing some techniques so that there's not this division. Wouldn't it be cool if you were a drug addict and you weren't scared of police when you were in your disease, when you're sick and sometimes you just need help, but you're scared to call the fucking cops because you know you go to jail? That would be great. And that can happen, but it's going to take a concerted effort on our part. But anyway, in the middle of it, the hobo guy comes back. Struck me as very odd. He's like, hey, man. I was like, hey, you know, whatever. Doesn't mention the fact that I'm fucking handcuffed, being detained by police. Doesn't say anything. Oh, hey, man, what's up? Hey. He's like, I think I was talking to the girl. He goes inside. Comes back out like 10 minutes later. And he's like, oh, hey, man. Uh, I just bought the dude the cigarettes, the milk, and the water. Uh, I don't know why I'm... Hey, everybody has a southern accent today. How did the hobo do talk? Uh, hey, um, yeah, I just bought the guy the, you know, the milk, the water, the cigarettes that he wanted. Um, can I leave him with you? Can can you make sure that he gets them? Cops like, oh, sure, sure thing, sure thing. They, like, do, like, a secret handshake. No, that didn't happen. But this guy actually bought cigarettes, the milk, and the water, and handed it to him. The same fucking guy that was buying all the protein bars earlier. I think that guy was an undercover cop. Or he called the cops on me. But he bought them for me because he says... He, what he told the cop is that he had gone... He said, he said, yeah, you know, I went home. I was trying to help this guy. I knew that he was having car problems. I went home and I got this, uh, I got some, you know, loose cash that I got. I wanted to buy it for him. I knew that, you know, he was buying milk for his kid and everything. So just make sure that he gets it. I mean, I was like, cool. Yeah, all right. All right. Thanks, white boy. But I don't trust it. I think that perhaps that guy set me up. And uh, yeah, so that, that's that. Um... That's what happened the last couple nights. Friday night is Sex Files for the $20 tier. I also have a monologue I haven't put up. Um, I don't, uh, I'll put this up first because it's Mother's Day and it's more timely. And then I get into, um, I get into LA later to this evening and I'm gonna, perhaps. But, uh, I, you know, it's been a hectic schedule and it's been hectic with that. My mom is in fucking horrible, horrible condition. She's just walking around pantless with like a big ass shirt on today and like high socks. She's like, I love you so much. I was like, I love you too. You gonna eat like that? I'm not joking. I'm not trying to make light of this at all. Um... But then she just starts crying. She's like, I don't know where I am. It's really sad to see. Um, so I'm dealing with that as well. But um, but I did, I don't know. I, I put some thought into the future of Patreon and to YouTube. I realized there needs to be more content, more consistency. 
I'm hoping that this will allow me to do so because some of this stuff won't take as long. So there's just a constant flow of early content as well as stories. And of course, Patreon will always get the most stories out of anybody, um, period. And, uh, and that's it. That's where we're at. I appreciate you guys. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers out there and to all the guys that bone them. How immature. Why'd I have to kill the video with that at the end? I do appreciate you all. Palabra.